I've been on a quest to find a video game controller I can use with just my left hand. The reason is that I've been experiencing bad carpal tunnel symptoms in this hand for a long time, and I've decided that I need to take a year off from playing video games, at least with the right hand, and see what I can enjoy using just my left hand. Now, one option that I started off with was to buy one of these so-called VR controllers. Obviously, you can see from the Switch that it's meant to run on Android or iOS, but it also works with a Bluetooth adapter under Windows. Now, this thing is a piece of junk. The lag is horrendous, and these buttons here are basically impossible to push in any ergonomic position whatsoever. They really mean for you to use it like this, but they do have a mode where you can use it like this. So this thing is not a solution. So then I started considering what I could buy on the used market. It's made by Sony. It's meant for the PS3. It has the old micro USB port to match, but it is possible to use under Windows with some tricks that I'll talk about later. You'd hope being made by Sony, it would have pretty good ergonomics. It doesn't really, although it's certainly usable and it's way better than the piece of junk I was showing you a second ago. It is a one-handed controller, but the fact that it's round actually is a big part of the problem. So as soon as you want to move the joystick around or mash the D-pad, you'll see that it, unless you're holding it tightly, and I'm exaggerating here, but this is a real problem, the whole thing wants to just rotate underneath you. And you'll notice I'm not actually moving the joystick at all, I'm just rotating the controller, which obviously doesn't result in any real world movement or virtual world movement, I guess you should say. So the solution is of course the death grip. You have to hold it very tightly. At that point you can, you can see I'm not really rotating much at all. I'm really actually controlling the joystick or the D-pad. But after using this for just a few days, I actually started to get RSI in this hand, which has never been a problem before. The death grip is really unhealthy. So in order to really make this usable, you need to find a way to mount it. Now there are these ridges here, which you can try to sort of grab a hold of some kind of clamp, or there are these screws here that you could back out and screw something to the bottom. I found a solution, which I'm not gonna show here because it wasn't great, but it was good enough to hold this thing still so that I could just operate it without having to hold on to it. And once I did that, those really big ergonomic issues went away. And so it was usable, but it still isn't ideal. Let's talk about why that is. In order to be able to use the joystick, the analog stick, you need to basically hold it like this. In that position, you have you know, reasonably good access to the joystick and reasonably good access to these shoulder button analogs here. So you've got the click button here and you've got the analog trigger here. And then there's also a button underneath the joystick head. Now that's three buttons. Not a lot of games are going to be fully usable with just three buttons. What about these guys down here? Well, there's no ergonomic way to have access to them at the same time you have access to this joystick. And also you lose the shoulder buttons if you're down here with the D-pad. So you can't really use them simultaneously. And then when you're down here, you know, you've got this O and X button that you could potentially use. But Sony was terrified that you might push these by mistake, I guess, while you're using the joystick. And so they made these really, really hard to push. I mean, I've never had a video game controller where the buttons are this hard to push. It's not impossible. You don't need to be, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger, but that's a lot of pressure to push them. If you have RSI, these are definitely not going to help at all. So these buttons, you know, they're okay for like, ooh, got to pause or, you know, open a menu or something like that, but they're just, they're just not at all an option for any kind of action-based inputs. And honestly, I mean, if you're using the D-pad to move around on the screen, you're not going to want to have to take your finger off the D-pad to operate these buttons. So you really want to be able to use the shoulder buttons. But I mean, there's just, there's no, there's no ergonomic way to do that, right? This is just, this is impossible. The D-pad really is not going to be something you can use with the shoulder buttons. So you're stuck using the analog stick. And then finally, there's this uh, PlayStation button down here that also is recessed. So again, they're terrified you might push it by mistake, uh, but at least it's it's easy enough to push. It's, I think, actually about as much force as this button here, but since it's got a larger area, the pounds per square inch is what works out to be better. So, you know, this looks great. It's got a lot of buttons on it, but in the end, really, it's only usable in this mode up here, making these buttons down here only useful for you know, rare actions, which is really disappointing. And then of course the D-pad is not gonna be useful as a D-pad. If you use software, you can remap those 
D-pad directions into button pushes and give yourself some more options. But, you know, they're, they're all going to end up being the sort of things that you want to be able to push once in a while, and you're never going to be able to have access to them for action sequences. So that makes this, on first glance, look great, but on any number of glances after that, turn out to be not a whole lot better than a Wiimote in terms of the number of buttons, and a lot less ergonomic than a Wiimote. The other thing I want to quickly mention is this D-pad here is kind of mushy. It's usable. Again, the big problem is that when you push on the D-pad, you wobble the whole thing. So once you've got it screwed down, it's not so bad. But it's definitely not like super duper tactile. I mean, I think D-pads always kind of suffer from that. I don't know that it's necessarily worse than a PS3 controller in that way. But in this particular form factor, it is particularly noticeable. You really get by far the best effect if you literally use your thumb on the individual button by itself rather than trying to just wobble it. So this is disappointing, but the alternatives are disappointing-er. So I think this is still probably the best choice if you're looking for a one-handed joystick. So then the question is, what do you need to do to use this under Windows? Given that it's got a USB port on it, even if it's one of these old fashioned ones, you might hope you could just plug it in and it would be recognized as a fully functioning joystick. It's not true. Actually, it is true in the sense that Windows sees it as a joystick, and so momentarily you might feel encouraged. It even sees the right number of buttons and axes, unlike the original PS3 controller. But none of those are actually recognized under Windows. No button press, no access movement with the analog stick registers in any way, shape, or form. And that's true plugged in over USB, and I understand it's also true when you try to use it as a Bluetooth remote. Now there is a solution, a free solution in some sense, and it's this software here. Now, if you know anything about the software, you know it's not free, but it comes with a time-limited trial, and when you install that time-limited trial, it does some sort of driver reshuffling. And the driver reshuffling works forever, even after the trial is over. And so at that point, you can use this thing as a third-party joystick, and you can you know, use whatever software you want to change the mapping. You don't have to use this software. Now, quick aside, I don't want to dump on software that costs money. It's certainly their right to charge whatever they want for this. Um, and I appreciate that the free trial makes this guy usable forever. But I have to say, the interface on this software is just the worst. You know, the number of times I've had to read a manual to use software in my adult life it was basically zilch until I got to this thing. These guys really need to contact me because they really need some UI design help. In any case, I appreciate that they've done the driver hackery in order to make this thing work, and it's, it's necessary. There's no other solution that I've found to make this thing operate. And, uh, you know, maybe consider giving them some money if you end up going this route because it's nice that they made it possible. And certainly the remapping features they have in there are helpful for being able to, you know, use the D-pad as buttons or whatever. You know, it's it's not worthless software by any means. It's just very poorly designed from a UI perspective. So, the conclusion. This is the best worst thing out there. I think if it wasn't quite such a pain to get the Wiimote to work, I might choose to use a Wiimote because the ergonomics are so much better. But even though these buttons down here are hard to reach and not really useful most of the time, it is awfully nice to be able to not reach over to the keyboard when you want to open up a menu or whatever. So this does end up being better than a Wiimote. And then, of course, it's way better than this piece of junk, which, you know, I'm not even going to bother changing the exposure here because I don't even want to show it again. It's so, it's so crappy. So, for now, this is the best thing that I found. I would be really enthusiastic to hear from any of my quote-unquote viewers, quote-unquote fans, quote-unquote enemies, as to a better alternative than this thing for one-handed video gaming. Certainly, I can't be the only person who suffers from RSI, and then there's people who have had it way worse than me and actually lost limbs. So someone out there has got to have found a better solution than this, but... If they have, it certainly isn't going to cost, you know, $15 on the used market, which is about what this thing goes for. So definitely this has its place.